parts on the stage of life, as the Shakespearean writings also say. I'd like to add one thing, one thing. In the booklet, when you buy it, if you buy it, on page 7, there's the code system uh, that he uses, the pieces use, uh, Greek large numbering, small numbering, and the sequence system. In the in large numbering, the reason why he chose Mariam is he adds an M in the front and the M in the back of his mother's real name. And so we have Piso, the first letter of Piso is pi, and pi was equal to 80 in Greek large numbering. So in essence, he's saying it's him. He's, the M and M is 80, so it's Aria Piso, or feminine version of his own name, Arias Piso. That's right. He's saying that I am the mother as well as the father. He's, he's everything. M on either end with the feminine form of my name of Arias in the middle is Aria. M plus Aria plus M is, means feminine myself plus 80. 40 and 40, which is 80. Now, the virgin birth, we have to say it because it ties out with this guy. Gaius Caligula, the emperor, the degenerate emperor. Uh, I had found it in, it's in your second book, your larger book, the reference. He, uh, on Gaius Calpurnius Piso's wedding night with Aria Jr., what does he do? According to Roman history, I'm not sure where I got it from. Right. Some place. The I reference is there, I got it. Suetonius, I believe. Is that right? Is that right? You talk, I'll get it. All right. Go ahead. You give the explanation. I'm going to find it. Antonius was Piso's grandson. He took the name from the general Suetonius who conquered Boethia in the 100 years prior, prior, prior to this time. And uh, in that battle, Suetonius Paulinus was a Roman general, so he was honored with the fictional name of Suetonius. But he wasn't a, really that much of a military man. He was a great writer. He became the Emperor Antoninus in 138 and then wrote up to his time a compendium of Gnostic literature and he gave it the name Gnostic literature. And uh, so we have uh, from Suetonius Gnostic literature and we also have from him the lives of the 12 Caesars. Um, up to just before the time of uh, of uh, the taking of power to this of Vespasian, and he posits the rule, which uh, the the information which Doug will tell you about that. And it's, it's really a, a very humorous thing. I I don't want to treat this too humorously, although Piso had a fantastic sense of humor. He, he was basically sticking his finger in the in the Roman aristocracy. They all knew this that. His real father was uh, Gaius Caligula. It must be in the later section. I, I can't find it. But I know it's in here. I found it earlier. Uh, that was the deep dark family secret. Now, the other part of Caligula is... was possibly uh, illegitimate. Well, the, the, the beauty of the... Whole, to flaunt right. the, Ro the Roman aristocracy yeah. back. The, the say, look, I'm entitled to be emperor. My father is... My father was Caligula. And everybody knows it. And everybody's <laughs> teaching me about it. So well, well, the, 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 with them. The, I'm, I'm going to flaunt it back. So. The other part of this thing is this. Uh, he was such a degenerate, he, he forced the Roman aristocracy to worship him as a god. So by, by Piso putting in there that God is the father, marries the mother, he's really talking about his own life. Aria, Mariam, is his mother. And everybody had assumed he was the was God, or had to worship him as a god, so basically the Roman god is his father, Gaius Caligula, and that's his mother, and he's the offspring. So it was not a virgin birth, obviously, uh, but a Roman god, uh, Gaius Caligula, was his real father, his real paternal father. That's the scandal that the Roman aristocracy knew about, because he must have had her for over a month after the wedding. And got her pregnant, and six months later, he's born in 37. Yes, it was nine months, about nine months after the wedding. Yeah. So we know who the father is. <laughs> There's no question about it. So, and, and that's the joke. And that's maybe why they got to get out, you know, figured his sons were in line to be emperors because Gaius Caligula was the emperor. Okay, I'll go on. 
Um, okay, who's the main designer of the, the NT? Who's the guy who put it together after the father got done with it? Fabius Justus took over. His, all of his other brothers, the four of them. Well, I think we're jumping ahead. I'm really talking about Arius Calpurnius Pisa. He's the guy who really was the designer he and was organizer. The director, he was everything. Two books had not been finished by the time he died in 118. They were Romans, the epistles of the Romans, and they were also they also consisted of uh, the um, uh, the book of Hebrews. They were written by his sons after his death. But everything else had been finished. Even the letters had been finished. He and his son, his grandson Arian collaborated mm -hmm. under other names, which we didn't correct in the booklets, but they're, they're by, largely by Piso and Arian. But there are five or six of these small letters at the end of the New Testament. They're also by Piso, but Piso with the help of his Arian, of his son, grandson Arian, whom he was training to be his successor in a literary sense on the Christian writings. What were some of the other pen names? The, the world knows him as Flavius Josephus. Yes, That's the most known. Flavius Josephus. But he, was, he never lived as Josephus. This is Winston's translation. So that book by, by Win Winston. Winston. By Winston, Winston is yeah. the famous book of the writings of Josephus. There is another. Uh, there is another series which we advise you to get if you can afford it, or read them in the library. Ordered them by interlibrary loan. Those are, I think, 11 volumes now, and they sell for $20, $22, perhaps less. The Loeb's? The Loeb Classical, li Classical Library, editions of Josephus. Um, they have a lot of uh, information in there, and they have the Greek on one side and the English on the other. They're easier to understand. But it takes scholarly work because it's not a quick read. By the way, that's how most of the uh, pastors and others get into the inner circle. They're curious about it. They start reading Josephus. The first mention of Jesus is, is, is in his testimony in Flavianum because he's the guy who wrote it. <laughs> that's why it's there. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so that was one of the pen names. What are some of the others of Piso? Titius Aristo, he, that was his name. These names appear in the writings of his much younger half-brother, who is also his granddaughter's husband, Pliny the Younger. He was finally admitted to the group, and he, they allowed him to write. Half-brother. Uh, yeah, that's right, his much younger half-brother. Um, yeah. Titius Aristo is a Roman jurist. Uh, Plutarch. He wrote as Plutarch, of course, the moralist. That's a joke by itself. Great, great writer. Uh, he was also Titinius Capito, a philosopher. Uh, he wrote as Nicomachus of Gerasa, a uh, Pythagorean mathematician. He also was the general at the siege of, of uh, the, Masada. As, under what name? Uh, Flavius <laughs> Silva. Flavius again comes back. Now he's Flavius, uh, Flavius Silva. He this is why. Because he related to the Flavians. And he forces the suicide, if it happened, of the, uh, of the zealots defending the mountaintop of uh, Masada before the Romans would break in after, in the morning and slaughter them all, torture them and slaughter them. Supposedly they committed suicide. 960 people, he said. Right, it's Romans all right. never bothered to count the bodies of their victims. They just shoveled them into the pit and covered them over and celebrated and got drunk. They didn't care about that. This time they counted the bodies, 960. Why? Made up of? Because 300 was T, which stood for Christianity. The cross. 600 was, 600 was the first letter of Christos, Chi. In large numbering. That's right. And uh, and six and uh, sixty was the name Calpurnius Piso in small numbering. Forty one was the total of the name Calpurnius. That's right. Nineteen was the total of the name Piso. It was Piso Cal Calpurnius Piso and uh, and Christianity and uh, and uh, the total was nine hundred sixty. There were also, according to Josephus himself. Seven people who didn't get killed by by uh, by suicide. Two women and five children in hiding. That made the total 967. 
But 67 was PSO2. If you try the, the sequence system, the letters of PSO in sequence, in, their al in the uh, Greek alphabet, total, not, total 67. That's why there are 967, actually. Much later, the predecessor to, to the story of King Arthur, written by the popes, the sequence, various chapters written by the popes, um, this was a writing of, uh, uh, of a, uh, of a, uh, of a uh, early church father who wrote under, under the name of, uh, um, a Danish writer who wrote of the, uh, the name escapes me now, but it's an early version of the King Arthur stories. And he single-handedly repels the invading Saxons. Guess how many he slew single-handedly? Go for it. <laughs> to defend Rome, to defend Britain against invasion by Saxons? You'll never guess. 960. Where did he get 960? Leave that to your imagination. But there were 960. One man slew and defeated the invading Saxons. Well, at this point, since we're dealing with numbers and stuff like that, uh, his... His eldest surviving son, he had an older son, Alexander, who evidently died in Judea earlier. No, I think he died in Asiatic Turkey. Same place. I mean, same area. Yeah. The, uh, the description of it and stuff like that is in Plutarch, where he comforts his wife. But anyway, uh, Julius is the one who wrote Revelation. And you're going to now know who Satan is. And this is his son. We'll explain it a little later. Well, why don't we do it now? Let's why 